Okay, we're with Hannah today and she has had an ACL reconstruction, but not only that, she's also had a meniscal repair and she did damage to her MCL. So she should have had that unhappy triad, if you like, the three things. She's had an ACL repaired, she's had an MCL tear, and she's had a meniscal tear that could be repaired, which is great. So with these ones, they are usually a little bit slower than a standard just an ACL. She has had a hamstring graft, but that's going well. But the slower part is because she's been in a brace for her MCL and she's had a medial meniscus repair, which just takes a little bit of time. It means the knee's a little bit stiffer than normal. So we've been working hard on getting her range better. Even though she's at week 14, she's doing all the exercises, which you'll see in a minute. Um, the stretching of the knee to keep it getting zero degrees and trying to keep her going into that sort of above 120 into 130 degrees has always been a struggle, but something she has to work on. And a lot of that is just repeating those stretches all the time, especially those quad stretches, to try and get all this tissue loose enough so she can actually get into there. And she has been getting tighter lately because in week 14 she's loading it up. So we're starting, we're away from that 12 week mark. We're starting to get things a lot heavier and loading on her knee, which does stiffen the tissues up, which then limits her range. So at this point in time, when the exercises get harder, the stretching has to maybe double up a little bit just to cope with that. So let's go through five things that we're going to showcase for her knee in week 14. Okay, so step down one exercise that you've been doing for quite a few weeks. This is your single leg squat. I call it a step down. Remember, she's stepping down off a box. It allows her to bend at her knee, bends at her hip, gets all her body right, right. We are adding on a weight. Now, this is only four kilos in each hand, which is eight kilos, but hey, that's more than 10% of her body weight. So that's a good place to start. And you can see with her, she's doing a really good knee flexion movement in that squat. Some people don't get very far, they stop here and they sit backwards, but her knee range is good enough to get that. Now I really promote her to try and get that knee forward as long as all her angles are right. Remember, we're loading the knee up, so she's gonna feel the load through here, but at this stage, week 14, it's a safe thing to do, it's gonna strengthen her knee up, and we need to get her quadriceps stronger, especially when the gym is shut and she's not able to get on any leg press or do anything like that, She's got to use this closed chain strengthening work. She's got to use some more weight than her body weight. Her body weight is not enough to strengthen that quadricep and hammy and the knee up enough at this stage. So we need to put weights in her hand. But again, it's not sort of more than 20% of her body weight. It's around between maybe 10 and 15. So this is a really good one for her. She's still got to concentrate on, have a rest for a second, her knee control. So she's got to concentrate on making sure that knee doesn't roll in. It's not just about the load. There's no point in putting load on if her knee rolls in. Now the good thing about her is she's got really good knee control. She always has. So try that again for me. And sometimes this is the secret about an ACL rehab. You know, having success is about not just strengthening your legs up, it's can you control it under load? So if you look at her knee from the front, she's keeping that from rolling in. Obviously we don't want this knee diving in this way. If it's diving in, it means the hip's not strong. Now she's worked hard on her hip and so she's got that control which gives her a license to then, if she can keep that in line, all she has to focus on is quads and glute max strength because her medial rotator glute med is working to keep her knee abducted, right, or in the midline, which will just give her a sort of a license to load it up. And if that is rolling in, you won't be able to load it up. So she's doing really well with that. Okay, second one is her skater squat. Now she did this in week 12 to 13. She's still doing it in week 14 because I want her to get even better and even deeper with her squat, wider with that foot over the next two weeks to improve her single leg stability. So we talked about, you know, okay, we're going to load up the single leg. We did that in a step down with the weights. Now we're trying to focus on, can we challenge her stability on a single leg balance. So her single leg balance is on a bow, so there's the challenge, but then we're gonna try and bend the knee, bend the hip, which makes her more unstable. So can she still keep her knee control, keep her alignment of the hip, and then work on, can you do that on a wobbly surface? So this is extremely good for her knee control. It's also extremely good for her medial, her MCL there, okay? So she's gonna build up some strength in that ligament by providing that sort of lateral movement. She's not impacting on this yet. This exercise is just focusing on, can you keep everything in line? Can you work on the stability part? 
and this is at week 14 is a great way to work on her sleep because she spent lots of time on this so she's got the balance there she's just trying to put it all together and this will pay dividends when she starts working on some jogging way down the track or some sidestepping work so another line for single leg strength is her pistol squat now she was working on a sit to stand last week holding onto a pole now this is a sort of a segue into getting her ready for testing okay at the end of the day we want to be able to do complete all the acl tests which is like sit to stand 22 times is going to be one of the tests we're going to get her to do i want her better than being able to sit down and come up off a chair i want her lower than that so if her ability is better than the chair doing a sit to stand then she's going to do really well with that test the other thing about this is you try that for me hannah when she does a sit to stand, she's going to get quadricep strength out of this. Remember, she's not in the gym. She hasn't got the leg press. But if you can achieve a pistol squat in here, now she won't go all the way down because she's just starting off this week. But you can see her strength is good enough to go below a chair already. So she's already, and some people don't have this, and I'll show you what to do if you don't have it, but she's already got the ability to go down and tap a chair and come back. So she can do repetitions, repetitions. The box is there for a goal. She wants to be able to get down to the box because she knows she's going to get below 90 degrees with that. Um, it also works on her strength here on this leg. So the hip flexion, the quad on this leg, being able to hold that leg out is really important. She's looking in the mirror. She can see, I can see that knee's perfectly in line. She's fine. So think of like, this is single leg control, single leg strength below normal or below 90 degrees. So she's tapping into quad strength here that she wouldn't normally get on a step down. She wouldn't get on a scatter squat. She wouldn't get on a sit to stand. This is the sort of thing she'd only get maybe on a leg press. But the beauty about this is so functional for her for sport and return to work because she, her work is a little bit different to other people. She's running around a lot. She's dealing with dogs. So she needs to have that ability to drop down really low for not just sport, but for work as well. If you're one of those people, have a rest from Hannah, that is struggling with that, then you can add an interim step if you've got a TRX and use this as a guide. I wouldn't use this as a fully a thing to hold on to. So this is something, there you go, Hannah, as a safety net, okay? This is a placebo, if you like, trying to help her brain get confident in going down further because she can always hold on to the straps to put herself back up again. So she'll do that again. And what I suggest people do is lighten the hands all the time, make sure you're not holding on. Like, don't hold on until you absolutely have to, and then she pulls back up again. So there's no point with this one and holding on from the start. You're still trying to get, you're doing it by yourself. This is more of a placebo to go, I've got a safety net here, I'm not gonna fall over, and then I can work on going low. And you can see how she, there's a certain point where she just can't, can't go any lower, she'll lose form. So. She's got to learn that she can't lose form. She's got to keep her form and then, yep, drive back up again. So if you're one of those people who needs that, this is a great little tool, but just make sure you're not using it on the way down. You're only using it right at the bottom where you absolutely have to, like a safety net, okay? But like I said, this if you can nail a pistol squat over time, you start off a week 14, doing as much as you can with that, and you progress this for weeks and weeks and months to see if you can get as low as you can because it is one of the best quadricep strengthening that's functional on a single leg and so good for ACLs. So there were sort of five components we're working on today. One was a single leg squat strength, then we're doing our yeah, balance, our stability on the BOSU, then we're going to try and combine those two things and get our deep range single leg strength and return to like getting preparation for testing, which was our pistol. Now we have to add on some impacts. We've got to, eventually, she's going to be running. So we've got to get her used to impact. Last week, she was jumping on a bow suit. So that was a soft, bouncy surface, super kind on the knee. This week, we're going to lay out on a hard box. But we, we're just starting off with going from one to two. Because I don't want her landing full impact on one leg. She can do that on a bow suit because it's soft on the bouncy side. But when it's a hard surface, I want her absorbing the pressure with two. So we're going to go from one to two. And the best one to do is go from her right leg and land on button two. So rather than pushing off on the injured leg or the surgery leg, she's gonna push off on a good leg, which gives her left leg a time to land. In two weeks time, she'll be doing the opposite. She'll be going from a left to a right. So, do you wanna show us, Hannah, what you're doing? So she's gonna go from right, land on two. Pretty good. Now, when you do that, just keep going for me, Hannah. When she's doing this, she's gotta land with wide feet. Her knees have gotta be over her feet, so as wide as her feet. 
and she's going to try and land and absorb. I don't mind people coming forward. They can come out of a squat position and go into like a deadlift position. That is absolutely fine because she's absorbing pressure. She's just got to learn to bend. She's got to learn to bend at the ankles, bend at the knees, bend at the hips, and absorb that pressure to take out that shear load of when you land. Because as we know, when people land on ACLs and they, the shear load is very high and there's a twist, they're in trouble. So she's learning to drop the shear load off and increase the compression down and then slowly come up. So this is a really good one to build confidence as well. Remember, you're gonna go into running, you're gonna be impacting. If you know you can jump and land on a box, it makes it, so the segue into running is so much easier. So her practice for two weeks is gonna be great. Not that she's gonna be running at week 16 because she's had a more of a complicated surgery than normal ACLs. We'll probably extend that out to maybe 18, 20 weeks. But at least she knows she's gonna be ready for it as far as an impact point of view. So that's a really good one. Now she's going to go from the box down onto the ground. So the same drill, going from one to two. And it's pretty much the same, it's just that you've got a little bit of height going on. So sometimes this is not necessarily the differences in function, it's about a brain thing. So just being able to jump down off something, off a gutter, like off a stair, making sure she's going to be safe and controlled. I like people thinking, go again for me, that this is like glass. So you're going to land on, so don't break or an ice on a pond. Don't break the ice. So what would you do to absorb the pressure so you didn't break the ice? Okay. And if they can think about that, they're usually going to do the right thing in compression of the knee into that squat position. And it's so crucial, especially for females. Landing in a squat in sport is a really good injury prevention uh, method for knees. Okay. Then we work on a side step. So again, she's not jogging, but she can do a sidestep jog. So if you show me that for us, Hannah. So she's going to pick a line. And that doesn't have to be too long. It's going to be about 10 meters or so. She's going to step sideways and come back. You'll notice that she's a bit sluggish when she lands on the leg. This leg will be good. That's a right. She bounces off beautifully. Bounce and push off. Okay. On her left one, because she's just starting this week, she's just learning. When she lands, there's a slight delay but she'll get better at that. There's a land, see there's a little delay. If you slow that down, there's a little bit of delay there, but she'll get better at that spring. And you'll notice she's on her toes. We want her on her toes, land, push off. Land, push off. Now the difference on this one compared to just jumping sideways is, you know, we practiced jumping sideways on a BOSU. We practiced that last week. This week she's going sideways and forward. Okay, so this is where she's gonna use her ACL more because she's trans going into that sort of anterior medial direction, like that. All right, so she's gonna need her ACL more when she jumps sideways in a forward direction. All right, this is why we challenge it. And it's not jogging, she's only doing three at a time. It's just getting used to that sidestepping, it's strengthening up her ligament, it's getting her brain on track, and it's just preparing her for the jogging phase. And she loves this one already, she's really into it. Um, and I find this is so good. You can just do it on your balcony, you can do it out in a park, whatever suits, if you go for a walk, this is the sort of thing you should be doing. But definitely not overcooking it. Her sort of you know, level of aggression of sidestep is perfect. You don't wanna be going too hard, too fast, because in the next month, that'll be building up anyway to a really aggressive sidestep. Now one final thing. We talked about how tight she was getting in the front of the knee and how she was losing some flexion. Now, this is a stretch the knee she needs to work on. Okay, I work on gliding that knee and getting the joint better, but she can't do that herself. She needs to work on this exercise, which is, hey, it's just a quad stretch, but it's so important. Remember, the loading and the quadricep work is increasing. So what will happen is that soft tissue will tighten up and then she'll lose range and then it'll feel stiffer and then she'll find she'll have trouble loading it again. So this needs to be almost be done twice as much. Now you can do it like this, you can do it like a sofa stretch where you put your foot on the sofa, you don't have to worry about the dorsiflexion part. As she gets better, and obviously she wants to loosen this quad up, when she loses that feeling where you go, I can't feel it in the quad anymore, she needs to go closer and closer and closer to the wall. So she goes into more and more and more and more knee flexion. So she's stretching her actual knee out into flexion as she goes, okay? But there's no point in going to full knee flexion if she's got heaps of quad tightness, okay? Because you're gonna compensate in the hip. So get rid of the quad tightness. 
then go close to the wall, get more and more knee flexion, and trust me, that will make a massive difference to the overall flexibility and feeling of the knee when she's jumping around.